Hello, everyone. Have you ever been watching some of those old movies and and it's like got this scene of a of a army with knights and a king and and then like the the first knight's always like for the king and he like runs out into the army and, and they're trying to like slash and dice and, and say something happens to the king like the king gets shot. You know, all the knights are like to the king and they rush back to the king and they're like all trying to protect him and and get him away. Or or even you know if something something's happening you know they're all like. May the king live forever, or, or something like that. And they're always about their king. It's very interesting that in today's society, especially here in America, we don't think much about kings and queens. Uh, we elect our officials. We don't, we don't understand a, a loyalty to them. So whenever there is a king or a queen, there is a loyalty that comes from people. And it's just such a bizarre thing. And so I was thinking on this subject whenever I was like, you know, what about Jesus as king? We always say Christ is king. What does that actually mean? Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed and being crucified, was given to Pilate. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You have said so. King of the Jews. So what does that mean? The king of the Jews. The king of God's people. He goes on later in the chapter to report that uh, when the soldiers had taken him, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus to the governor's headquarters, and gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe and twisted a crown of thorns, and they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And then they had mocked him, and they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to, to crucify him. <laughs> King of the Jews! <laughs> and smack him in the face. Does that sound like loyalty to the king? Let me ask you this. Are you loyal? to the king. You say Christ is king, but do you mean it with your heart? You see, a lot of times we like to pretend. We like to think that Christ is number one in our lives. But if we sat down and we thought about it, if we counted up the minutes, the hours that we spent doing other things besides praising God or thanking God, we would realize that Christ is the king of our lives. With my life, you know, it might be Josh is king of my life, or food is king of my life. I'm constantly thinking about it and wanting to eat it. Or maybe it's a video game or a TV show, a book, maybe it's work. You know, as a, as a youth minister, sometimes I, I have to walk a fair line of being able to consider my work, my Christian duty, and, and where do these lines draw and whatnot, and that's difficult. Maybe your work is, you know, stacking sh stocking shelves or um, cutting yards or waitressing or uh, putting lumber into lumber bins. Whatever your job is, does it come before Christ? It's very interesting. Uh, as we sit here and look at our lives, what comes before Christ? See, in those old movies, the king was the most important part. They would die for their king. They, would, they were trying to save him, or if there was something happening, they were rallying to the king. But we, we might view ourselves as king. Josh is king, or insert your name here, is king. And one passage left for you. This is in John, still a crucifixion. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place they called the place of the skull, which is in Aramaic, Golgotha. There they crucified him and with two others, one on each side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. How many of us are, are like the Pharisees? That whenever we look at Christ as king, we're like, ah, but he's, he's really not. Just, just say that he is. Or that he thought he was. He's not really my king. So that becomes... My questions that we're going to answer in our Zoom class, which will be Sunday at 7 o'clock for the junior high and 7.30 for the senior high. Is Christ king in your life? How do you show that? How do you show that Christ is king? Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, this is just a little one-shot video about how Christ is king. Answer me. Are you like the Pharisee, or are you like the soldiers who mock Jesus and say, Oh, king, but don't really mean it. Or are you like some of his disciples who hold him up and say, Christ is king?